year, millions of people across the world are diagnosed with cancer. Yet, an incredible 40% of those could be prevented. One way to decrease the risk is through exercise. Even simple exercises that you can do around the home or office can make a difference. Well, hello, I'm Sue Saville, and welcome to Empowering Lives, Proactive Approaches to Cancer Prevention, an ITN business panel discussion in partnership with World Cancer Research Fund. Now, every year, World Cancer Research Fund holds Cancer Prevention Action Week, which focuses on empowering and supporting people to make changes to their daily lives to help reduce the risk of preventable cancers. Well, this year, the campaign's focus is on physical activity, what benefits that can bring. And joining me from World Cancer Research Fund, I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Helen Croker, who is the Assistant Director of Research and Policy. Also, Matt Lambert, who is the Health Information and Promotion Manager. And with them, we have Ellie Philpotts, who was diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma, a type of blood cancer, when she was just 15 years old. Well, now 12 years on, She's in remission and she's focusing on living life well. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us. So, Helen, firstly, if I could turn to you to ask you about this year's campaign and the focus on physical activity. Is there a particular group of people that you're targeting this year? Yeah, there is. Um, I'll tell you about the campaign briefly. Um, Cancer Prevention Action Week is an annual event where we raise awareness of cancer prevention and encourage people to take action. This year's campaign is all about moving more. Now, most people know that being physically active is good for health generally, but what they may not know is that regular physical activity can actually reduce the risk of several cancers, including breast cancer, colon cancer and endometrial cancer. However, we know that people can find it difficult to fit in physical activity and not everyone likes to go to the gym or go out for a run. So in this campaign, World Cancer Research Fund is asking people to move more by finding spare moments in their day to fit in short bursts of physical activity. So through this, we hope that people can start to build up the amount of physical activity they do and also to become more confident in being active. And in terms of who the campaign is targeted at, we really hope that everyone can engage with it. But in particular, we hope that people who aren't very active at the moment can benefit. And for example, one group who can find it really tricky to be active are middle-aged women. <laughs> um, perhaps, Matt, why would that be? Why would middle-aged women, perhaps the sort of 40 to 60-year-olds, be less active? What are the challenges there? Yeah. So I think firstly, when we look at XI surveys, what is clear that women are generally less active than men. And we also see is that the older we get, the less active we are. And that applies to both sexes as well. So when we look at women particularly, that could be down to a number of factors. It could be down to lacking competence, not knowing what to do. Time, we talk about quite a lot because we know time is a massive barrier to so many people and lack of motivation as well. And often it's just about knowing where to start and how to actually maintain a routine. But again, that might be tied with lack of time and motivation. And we also know women are so well known for putting themselves first, which can might mean they assume extra tasks, which can often mean that things that promote the health, like getting active, good, like getting more active, tend to take the back seat, which is, which is really unfortunate. However, Older women actually have a lot to gain when it comes to physical activity. And when we look at the type of physical activity women are doing less of, we know that women are doing significantly less muscle strengthening activities. And that's actually a key part of our physical activity recommendations. And we know for older women, especially women who are um, postmenopausal, after the menopause, there's less estrogen. So there is an increased risk of uh, bone fractures, increased risk of osteoporosis because um, estrogen is bone protective. So actually, women doing muscle and bone strengthening exercises when they're later on in their life can actually help to improve bone density and actually reduce the risk of osteoporosis later on in life as well. And how physical does it have to be? What sort of physical activity will bring those benefits? Yeah, so when we talk about physical activity, it's basically anything that gets your body moving a bit more and gets your body using energy, what we call calories. So that can include walking, cycling to work and back, or going to the shops, 
daily chores like hoovering and dusting, or it could be more structured exercise like going for a run or doing an exercise class to even playing sports. But what we know is really important for improving our health and longevity is increasing our aerobic fitness. So basically, what that can help to make us fitter by improving the efficiency of our heart and lungs when we're active. And when we do activities that are get a heart and breathing rate up for a period of time, that is really when we start really reaping the benefits of physical activity. So what I will say, if you're not currently very active, doing activities that get us a little bit breathless is a great place to start. So that could be swimming, brisk walking. But the key thing to remember is that any activity can be made more vigorous by increasing your effort. So obviously, as people get fitter, you can do activities that get you a bit more breathless. So what we call like more vigorous activities. So that could be things like um, jogging, fast cycling, fast swimming, etc. But the most important thing is that we get the heart rate up for a period of time. And it's about starting at a level that's right for you. So if you've been really inactive for quite a long period of time, starting at a moderate level and moving up to a more vigorous level. So it's just being careful about making sure you don't go from zero to 100. So slowly but gradually, incrementally, do a little bit more and push yourself a little bit harder as well. But anything that gets your heart rate up, it all counts. Uh, Nelly, I'm wondering, a younger woman, but I'm wondering how your cancer diagnosis has perhaps focused your efforts on future-proofing your own health. Yeah, I mean, I think having a cancer diagnosis so young, as you said, I was just 15, really makes you realise how fragile health can be and how important it is to look after it when we can. You know, so much of our health is out of our control, as my diagnosis was. But as we touched on earlier, almost half of cancers can be prevented. So I think kind of growing up with that knowledge made me want to do whatever I can to future proof my health going forwards. You know, I know how devastating a diagnosis can be so if there's anything I can do to lower my future risk then obviously I'm, I'm going to be really keen so yeah I've been definitely been trying to do um, exercise snacking and, and build up my my exercise routine um, I'm probably not the best but I think you know every every little really does help and that's right and Helen what about from the science side of it what what evidence is uh, about the the benefits of physical activity how they might even prevent some cancers yeah, so at World Cancer Research Fund, we've spent several decades researching how we can better prevent cancer. And as I've mentioned, there's strong and consistent evidence that regular physical activity can reduce the risk of several cancers. Now, the steps leading to the development of cancer are complex and take place over several years, if not decades. And um, cancer develops as a result of damage to cells' DNA, which accumulate over time and can allow cancers to develop. Physical activity affects several different systems in the body, for example, our, our hormone system, our immune system, and also metabolic pathways. And these are all related to the development of cancer. Now, to give you some examples, our analyses have shown that the risk of colon cancer or bowel cancer is reduced by 20% with high versus low levels of physical activity. For postmenopausal breast cancer, this is 13%. And for endometrial cancer, 27% reduced risk. So these are really meaningful reductions to our risk of cancer. That's, that's really quite remarkable. So Matt, with your experience as a personal trainer, um, for those who say, well, I still don't have any time. I know the theory, but I, I'm so busy. I lead a busy life, job, family and so on. Um, how can those sort of people fit exercise into their lives? Yeah, exactly. We know time is a massive barrier to so many people. But the good news is that exercise doesn't need to be long to benefit us. In fact, what is coming through loud and clear from the research is that there is no minimum amount of time we need to be active for for it to benefit our health. And I actually recorded some activities uh, in the office the other day just to see actually how practical it is. So here I'm doing some tricep dips for my triceps. I'm doing some check um, um, counter press ups for my chest and triceps. Here I'm doing some elbow to knees. Like it's great to get the heart rate up and get the legs working. Now here I'm doing some calf raises to strengthen my calf muscles. And as you say then that you've got your heart rate up a bit, so you look fairly static when you're doing these exercises, but you can then get some benefit to the heart then. 
Yeah, absolutely. So any activity can become more challenging the longer we do it. So obviously those type of activities looked fairly static, but if I was continue to doing that for maybe two to three minutes, getting to the point where my muscles are really starting to feel that sort of like tightness, you're actually going to really start feeling a bit breathless. So here I'm doing some some leg extensions. Um, again, you can make these ex ex activities harder by doing them slower. Here I'm doing some lunges, which are great for the fine muscles. Again, they all look fairly static. So again, I'm doing some standing leg raises here, which again, which is going to get the heart rate up. Doing a modified version of press ups here, again, for my chest and shoulders. Again, so these are all sort of really accessible forms of activity that anyone can do and it's all about trying to look at your routine to fit and trying to fit in these little bits of activity when you can and what i always try to encourage people to do is do something at least once or twice an hour so maybe it's doing something more gentle like doing some car phrases maybe you might want to do something that gets you that gets you a little bit um, puffed out so doing the sort of elbows to, to knees it's ultimately it's about doing something and the more you do it the longer you keep doing an activity for, even for activities that look fairly static, you can feel your heart rate come up as well. And what's really important is that, yes, it's good to work on our cardiovascular fitness by doing activities that get a heart rate up, but also to do activities that strengthen our muscles and bones and help to improve joint mobility and flexibility as well. So, so even though you're doing activities like um, the one I was showing, doing the seated calf raises, even that's quite gentle, it's actually still really important because it's going to help strengthen the muscles to the ankles and the uh, the joints in the ankle. Uh, and that basically helps to make us more mobile and hopefully potentially less likely likely to have um, to have falls um, as well because the muscles surrounding the little ligaments in the ankles are actually stronger um, as well so and that's why it's important to do activities that work on our fitness and also work on our, our, our muscle health um, as well which is really important as we get older and usually we're told to avoid snacking but this form of exercise snacking can be very beneficial then Matt yeah, no, definitely. So exercise snacking is a fairly new term, um, a new approach to exercise. So it's originally coined back in 2014, and it consists of brief bouts of activity spread throughout the day. So it can last as little as 30 seconds to a few minutes. And here are some more videos of me doing some movements, which um, take into account an exercise snacking type of concept as well. So here I'm doing some sit to stands, which are again, it's a modified version of squat, so a little bit uh, more suitable for older people. Again, doing some seated arm curls, just using uh, bottles of water, but you can use tin cans. Again, seated leg extensions. Again, if you haven't got great mobility, so just it's about doing something. Um, doing here I'm doing some shoulder raises with bottles and bottles of water. Again, you can use tin cans as well. It's about showing the people that actually you can use equipment that you've got in and around your home here i am working in the office here and doing stuff within the office environment shouldn't be thought of as like something strange to do it's good for all of us to do a little bit more especially during our daily lives because a lot of us can spend up to about nine hours sitting um, a day. So doing anything that breaks up those periods of sitting is fantastic for our health. And, and exercise snacking is really good because it naturally helps to break up these periods of sitting as well. And I always try to get up every couple of hours, every 30, 60 minutes. I set a reminder on my phone to just do something, whether it's jogging on the spot for a few minutes, whether it's taking a work call on the phone or using the stairs in the office to just go up and down the stairs a, a, a few times and you know of course sometimes you might get some funny funny look from people but ultimately you are the one reaping the benefits and hopefully the people seeing you might think what's, what's Matt doing I'm, I might give that a go as well it's about making it a habit and ultimately it's about doing things that work your muscles get your heart rate up but also that you enjoy doing as well and I think that's often a forgotten area of keeping active because it's getting active and keeping active are two very important things um as well so you want to be able to do something that you're going to keep doing um for the long term because that's really when you're going to start reaping the benefits of reducing risk of cancer and the overall health and well-being benefits that keeping active has on our body and and, and Matt, you were saying you, you shouldn't get strange looks in the office i think you might <laughs> but nonetheless uh, what about for older people? Some of the exercises you've recorded, uh, they show the sort of things you can do seated then. What sort of things do you recommend if people are, uh, are older, perhaps? 
Yeah, so I think when you're older, actually, older people actually have the most to gain when it comes to physical activity. So naturally, from the age of about 30, we start to actually lose a small amount of muscle and bone and strength. And that can have a really big impact on us later on in life, because if we've lost a lot of muscle and strength when we're older, that can mean we are more prone to falls. And that can lead to falls that maybe end up in hospitalization, especially if that leads to um, a hip fracture. And keeping strong when we're older helps to make daily activities feel easier. So simple things like getting on and off a toilet. Um, if you, you know, if you're on the, the sofa, um, you can basically just have better strength in your legs to lift yourself back up. And here I'm doing some sit stands, which are a really fantastic, easy form of activity you can do. Maybe you can fit them in um, during the advert breaks as well. And here I'm just doing some exercises again to strengthen my thigh muscles. Again, just helping to increase joint mobility and strength um, as well. Because keeping our joints flex, but is really important because generally our joints get tighter as we get older which is why a lot of older individuals feel that they've got tighter shoulders they've got tighter and sore knees and a lot of that is down to um sitting for, for too long and the more activity we can fit in to naturally break up those periods of sitting is really good for our joint health because what it does you know doing things like sit to stand help to increase and build up the strength surrounding the knee joint so actually have more muscle surrounding the knee so actually if you have knee pain it can actually help to reduce um knee pain and if even if you've got chronic knee pain it can help reduce the, the severity of the pain um as well so i would always encourage older individuals to try and fit in some form of activities that get our muscles working a bit harder so some of the activities that i've just demonstrated um um a few moments ago but also av everyday activities things like um in the garden when you're digging and shoveling that count carrying the heavy shopping um from the car into the house that will count as well and maybe Thank people you. don't like the thought of lifting you know lifting weight but you can use things like resistance bands like i showed water bottles tin cans um yoga is another great form of activity um so anything that challenges us a little bit harder challenges our muscles rather um is fantastic for helping to improve muscle and strength that's great. Thank you so much for running through those exercises for us. Well, Ellie, I'm interested. Have you managed to incorporate exercise snacking into your life? Yeah, definitely. So I've kind of set myself a bit of a mission to, you know, build up my exercise levels in simple ways. Um, and so far, I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more than I would have expected initially. So I've been trying to, you know, build easy ways um, to get more movement into my daily routine. So especially when working from home, things like brushing my teeth while doing some stretches or um, doing a little bit more of yoga and Pilates in the evening. Um, as Matt said, things like lifting maybe tins of baked beans or waiting for the kettle to boil um, and trying to do a bit more walking rather than just relying on those London buses. Um, and I think it's been really rewarding so far. I think, you know, small steps really do add up. Um, and I definitely have been feeling a positive difference, both kind of short and long term. So, yeah, hopefully I'll stick to that beyond January and now February. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you, Ellie. And Helen, I'm interested. It's all very well that's incorporating this exercise into our lives. But if we then go off and eat a cream donut, that's not going to help, is it? So what about the eating side of it? Yeah, well, what we eat is obviously really important. And we've analysed the findings from thousands of studies from all over the world and have put all this evidence together to develop a set of evidence based cancer prevention recommendations. Now, alongside physical activity, there are several recommendations related to what we eat, which can influence our risk of developing cancer. And some of these are eating plenty of whole grains, fruits and vegetables, beans and pulses, also limiting how much red meat we eat, avoiding processed meat as far as possible and avoiding alcohol. And we also know that being a healthy weight is good for cancer prevention. And in fact, obesity increases the risk of 13 different cancers. So there's a lot that we can do in terms of our eating alongside being physically active to get ourselves really healthy and reducing our risk of cancer. And we mentioned early on that some 40 percent of cancers are understood to be preventable. What other things could we all be doing to reduce our risk? Yeah, so obviously, you know, diet and physical activity are really important, but 
I mean, smoking is um, the number one uh, risk factor. So it's, of course, important not to smoke and to be safe in the sun. And the more of these things you can do, the, the greater the um, benefits for your health and also for reducing cancer risk. And, you know, doing all of these things, we can reduce our cancer risk by up to 40 percent, which is really quite remarkable. We can't eliminate the risk completely, but there's a lot we can do. And I'm interested, Matt, you've been a personal trainer yourself. Do you have examples of where you've helped somebody to reduce their risk by perhaps incorporating some of the things that Helen's mentioned there? Yeah, so working as a personal trainer, obviously you get to see a whole range of people across whole different professions. And, you know, I've worked with lots of really busy professionals. And, and of course, what does a busy professional say that they, have, they lack? And, of course, it's time. So it's very much looking at, firstly, how much time they've got to allocate and really, really maximizing what they do in that time. So it's not necessarily working out for longer, it's working maybe a bit harder and a, and, a, and a bit smarter. So obviously when I was a personal trainer in the gym, so you know my example is very much sort of like gym based, but can apply to outside of the gym environment as well. So you know I would always sit down and think about, right, what have I, how much time have I got to spend today? If I've only got 20 minutes, I've had many people say to me, Matt, I've only got 20 minutes to allocate to working towards my goal a week. Is that enough? And I say to them, Absolutely, it's more than enough. So often people think that you've got to be working out for hours on end to get benefit. Actually, what's coming through loud and clear from the research is that activity, short duration, more vigorous intensity activity can have significant benefit to, um, to, to our health, um, both from a fitness point of view and improving our strength um, as well. So ultimately, it's about fitting in what you can when you can. And I think with people who don't have a huge amount of time, I think it can be really motivating because I think the whole concept with exercise snacking of doing short, sharp bouts of movement done throughout your day is fantastic because you don't actually need to set time aside to, to, to do it. And I think anything, it's almost like a bit of a lifestyle hack, really, isn't it? You know, if you can think, if, if you can sort of almost hack your way to getting improved fitness, then fantastic and it just it makes it more ex accessible but going to going back to my original example i think when people get their heads around the fact that i don't need to be working out for ages i can get actually really significant health benefits and improvements from a short sharp bouts of activity it you know it, it, it's really motivating and here i am doing some seated um, arm punches that are really great for the shoulders i'm doing another pacific shoulder press here um Again, these can be done seated for if you know if you've got lower mobility, it can really help. And here I'm doing a modified version of squat, so just using the wall support for added added resistance as well. Um, walking up and down the stairs, so you so doing some step ups. Again, really good for getting the heart rate elevated. Again, all these activities can be modified to suit you and what you actually want to achieve as well. Because ultimately, I think what people decide to do and focus their energies on comes down to your goal and what you want to focus on, whether it's training to run a half marathon or whether it's trying to improve your muscle um, and bone health as well. So all of these movements that you, you've seen today can all be modified to make them easier or harder. You can make them harder by obviously using heavy resistance. So maybe you've got some heavy walls of bottles. You can also do the movement slower or you can do the movement for longer. And I like to use, you know, I, used to, I like to put a timer on and think, right, I'm going to do some sit to stand for, for, for two minutes. And gosh, by the time you get to that, that last 10 seconds, you're sort of urging the time to end because, you know, you're really feeling like your legs working, your legs burning, um, and you're really feeling like your heart rate being elevated as well. And I think really and that, that that's a key thing. It's about pushing those movements that might look quite static, but if you keep doing it long enough, you're going to really get significant aerobic benefits. So really helping to improve the heart and lung efficiency. That's really helpful, Matt. And I'm really interested, Ellie, you touched on things like yoga. Some people might think, oh, you've got to go to a formal exercise class or have a gym membership that's pricey. Uh, and you talked about some of the nudges. What, what about those habit stacking where you can nudge this into your daily life? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think the whole thing is you really don't need to fork out a lot on um, going to the gym. You know, if you just start with habit snacking, you can really get that into that routine and sort of not see exercise as this big and surmountable task looming ahead of you. I think that, you know, most people do those daily habits I mentioned earlier, you know, boiling the kettle probably a few times in a single hour, um, brushing our teeth, you know, maybe walking the dog or to a bus stop, coming across staircases. So I think if you just start to think about how to incorporate a little bit of extra movement into those everyday routines um, you'll notice before long that it's really start to click and I think that's kind of what the make your move campaign is all about you know just sort of building little things into everyday life and I think before long you will notice that it does make a positive difference to your overall health and well-being and you know for someone like me that is especially important after cancer so I yeah so. I definitely think it's, it's doable. You've all given so many important points there. Briefly, Helen, if we had one key message that you wanted to deliver, what would yours be, Helen? I think um, whilst we can't completely remove the risk of us developing a cancer, there are many positive things that people can do to reduce their risk. And I think that's really empowering that we can take steps to improve our own health. Lovely. Matt, very briefly, your one key message that we should all take home with us. So I think the key thing is to embrace the philosophy of every movement count and to find something that you enjoy doing, do enjoy doing, because that way you're more likely to keep doing it. Often people make themselves do exercise because or various forms of exercise because they think they should do it. Um, but do something that resonates with you, what feels good to you, because you're going to keep doing it. That makes sense. Any what about your one key message that we should hear? I think mine would be that, you know, both the possibility of cancer in our future and getting exercise into our routine can seem daunting. But I really do feel that starting small can have a big impact. And so feeding exercise, snacking into daily life is a really useful way to build up our overall health and resilience for the future where it is within our control. Those are really important points. Thank you all so much for that discussion. It's been absolutely fascinating. I'm going to go away and start habit stacking with my exercise snacking, <laughs> building it in. Um, not sure what people around the office might think, but very, very important points there. Things we can all do to reduce our risk of cancer. So thank you very much to Dr. Helen Croker, to Matt Lambert, and also to Ellie Philpotts for contributing today and to motivating us to all do something to take action to prevent re preventable cancers where we can. It's been a great discussion. Thank you all very much. And if you would like to find out more, do go to the World Cancer Research Fund website. With more information on there, the details appear on your screen now. So thank you all very much for watching. From me, Sue Savile, goodbye for now. Thank you. <laughs>